Hey guys, welcome back. Candace here. I feel like I'm way back here to get the full beach into the screen. So I don't think there is anything cooler than a beach unfurlowing in the spring. Um, it's actually quite magical and I've been snapping some pictures so that you'll be able to see that and I'll put those together probably, I don't know, maybe a few days from now, a week from now, but they start as a very tight, normal looking brown itty bitty bud. And then that bud starts to swell and this process occurs very, very quickly. And from that bud, we get this amazing branch unfurling of like eight to 10 inches. I don't know where it, where it comes from, but it's like this little cocoon and all of a sudden it just erupts and shoots out. So I have two things I need to do with this beach today. Um, one thing is we have to do some pinching on this beach, um, because of where it's at. And then it should be ready just to kind of grow the rest of the season. I did contemplate, is this the season I'm going to start pinching this beach or am I going to do a post spring flush hardened off pruning? And in looking at my branch development, and we'll come in and look at that closer, um, just because there's so much we can't get into it far out, see it. We need a close-up cam, a zoom lens. I don't know. Um, but I have looked at my branch structure and what I have this year. And I have decided this is the year that we transition more from our secondary scaffolding, that secondary structure formation, now into pushing more interior budding um, from that scaffolding we have built over the last, you know, what, two seasons and start to look, work now on that finer ramification um, within this tree. This is, and we also have to repop this tree today. Um, I am a, like I said, I think I'm a day late on the pinching, but I couldn't call into work and be like, sorry guys, I'm going to be a little late today because I got to get my tree pinched first. Um, but not too bad. So let's come in and look at the branch structure and talk about then, well, do we pinch? Do we prune? What is pinching? What would pruning do? And then how I came to make the decision that this is the season that we are going to pinch. All right, let me bring you in. So. All right, so let's first review our stages of development. So we have our primary stage of development, which is really developing our initial structure. So we have our primary trunk line and then our primary branches that are coming off of that trunk line. Um, and they have been set. They were wired last fall. And after that, once these hit that desired thickness that we wanted, then we cut them back to the desired length and that occurred last year in a fall pruning to help set then the buds for that sec secondary scaffolding to start on. Um, so now if we go in and we look at some of these branches, this looks really out of proportion, but. All right, so I'm on the struggle bus trying to get this into view. So what we have here is a really, really beautiful branch setup that we've done. So we have our primary branch coming off of the um, trunk line. And then what we have is our secondary scaffolding coming off that primary branch. And then we have all these new buds that are starting to unfurl. So what I want to do right now then is I'm going to go in and I'm going to pinch the tips of our strongest buds here. If something is weak, if something still needs to be healed, um, then I'm just going to let it be. If I need more thickness or more length, again, we're going to let that be. But overall most of these tips are going to be pinched. Now, if we're not at that point and we're still developing secondary scaffolding, we will wait and then do a post spring flush hardened off pruning instead, which is what we did last year on this tree. And that's how we got that secondary scaffolding. If we move up a level, again, look at this. We have this gorgeous, gorgeous branch coming off our primary branch here. We've got the secondary scaffolding structure coming off. 
And then we have our new buds this year unfurling. And that's where we're going to pinch them off and then build the ramification and that fine twigging from that. Now, to pinch a beech, all we're going to do, and a pinching can only be done at this or like a day or two before this, just as soon as it kind of starts to unfurl and you see those first, you know, leaves start to kind of unroll. Literally, we're just going to go in on that tender green growth and pull, pinch, gone. So I'm going to work through, I'm going to pinch this tree and then we're going to get it repotted. All right. Hi guys. We're down here now. Um, and today we are going to be repotting this. I do know I need my ratchet pruners. I hope they're big enough for what I think I need to do with these roots. Um, I'm going to get this out of this and we're going to get it into that new cement pot. So, yep, tree is tied in. We'll go into caffeinated mode while I do that. So we have a beautiful, lovely amount of rooting mass that this tree put out last season. Um, healthy, healthy, lots of fine feeder roots down here. I don't know if you can see it in here, but we have some mycorrhizal colonies, which our deciduous trees do also get. I know we always talk about the conifers, but every tree variety has a beneficial bacteria or fungus that helps it. Um, so I'm going to start out with a chopstick. No, I'm not. I finally remembered it after my unboxing because I had left my new root rakes upstairs. I finally got them and I brought them down. So this was made by Bobcat Bonsai. Absolutely lovely. Fits my hand nice. Nice little thingamajigger flow. Nice little um, ergonomically correct flow. So I'm just going to go in here and just gently, this tip allows me much like a chopstick to gently tease out the top roots here without damaging them. Um, he really, really did a great job on these. You can find him on YouTube over at Bobcat Bonsai. Um, also, I know he has a website that he's now started, but this is not going to be a complete bare rooting of this tree because we're going right back into an APL mix, a small grain. It looks like last year what I did was a 50% APL to 50% Akadama because I really wanted to get more fine feeder roots up higher because from what I remember, last year I had brought this one to one of our bonsai monthly gatherings where we talk about trees and work on trees together. And there is a really big encircling massive snail-like root and the beech trees are excessively thirsty so I took it out of its nursery grow bucket pot last year and then we hacked off a hunk of that encircling big root and then planned to go in now again this year and remove a little more as we picked up more roots up in area other areas um, that are more conducive for continued bonsai development. Um, there's that big beast. It was really very weird, very much like we're going to actually repot the big Benjamina ficus this year together. And it was very similar to that, though not to the degree. We may have to do almost a bare rooting on this tree to get to that area that we have to fix. All right, so our base of the tree comes down right here. And we can see we have a this massive circle snail root. So last year we had chased it back to here. And we have lots of new roots that came out as a result of that. We can be a little bit more aggressive with these bigger cuts in our deciduous material. Um, not all deciduous material, but B 
beech, maples, um, take significant root hacks quite well, as long as you can provide them the appropriate aftercare. Um, so we are going to take this piece, it left here, and I think we're going to take it all the way back to this, this part. So we're going to remove now, you know, look at how huge that is. So we're going to chase this one. Let's see. I gotta find where that stump ended. Right here. And we're gonna take it right back to here. And then that's what we're gonna do seasonally is we're gonna keep chasing this root back. Last year I literally took this to a meeting because I knew I didn't have a it, I didn't have a cutting tool big enough, big enough to go into here. One, two. three. Let's see what we got. This is going to be ridiculous. We'll see how much that took off and if we have to take it back any further. Look at how massive monster that is. We actually just took off a little bit. Let's go back a bit more here. Maybe I got it two. Three. These were an absolutely amazing gift from Blue Jay Bonsai. So he had got me a couple of these ironwood pruners. Um, this is the model IW1405. It's a ratchet pruner, so I actually don't have to have a lot of hand strength to do these big cuts. Took off another big chunk. We didn't lose much out of that. We'll trim off, trim back some of these bigger ones that we have now that have circled. And we have plenty of rooting mass left here still to support the tree. Look at how cool these roots are because they made this kind of detail swirl right here. This is more work that we did last year, and as a result, we got these new roots here. But one day, this will be chased back to here, and maybe that day will be next year. I need to make sure it's going to sit in the pot. All right, guys, the beach is all done. It has been pinched, it has been repotted. It's going to get watered now, and I think tomorrow my trees will be able to go outside. Um, so tonight we're going to have three hours of around 25 degrees. And then it looks like we'll finally have spring. Um, so everything will get shuffled out tomorrow. And I'm probably going to then start on a couple repots of the outside material. We also have two, one, two, three three air layers to do and one Yamadori collection. Um, so that's what's going to be coming up next. And we'll see what makes it on this video with the beech tree. Probably my maple accidentalis, accidentalis, but let's take a 360. It's now in this nice cement round, oval, wonk, cement, free for me. I don't know the potting stuff, you guys. I don't. Um, yeah. Loving, loving. I, I already can't wait for next season, just knowing where my buds are going to erupt, where I'm going to get some bifurcation, where I'm going to get some more filling in. How beautiful those branch structures are coming along. I think this is going to be a tree in the next few years here. That's going to show really well in a winter silhouette. We'll be back. Hey guys, Candace here. On today's episode, this is actually probably a continuation. It's probably going to piggyback on the beach that we just did. Uh, <laughs> but it's a new day for me. And I have, oh squirrel, let me finish my other sentence first and then I can start a new one. Um, what was my other sentence? Are we going to edit that out? 
don't know. Guess we'll see how I feel when I edit. Hmm. Where was that train? Oh, on today's episode, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna keep working through our spring to do list, um, getting our seasonal tasks done that are time sensitive that need to be done now, or we miss have that missed opportunity and shouldn't be done later in the season. So we would have to wait till next year. Um, so I'm pretty much done with the repots. Yes. As far as my tree trees that were inside, um, with the exception of when we hit tropical repotting season and the mugo pine at that time. Um, but I do need to root work, root work, and possibly pot up a maple accidentalis outside. And we need to start on our air layers. Um, so this is the crab apple that busted out last year from this extremely little tiny whip into, I mean, this is, this is absolutely redonkulous. Um, but I wanna get an air layer on this branch right in this area um, and Later then we'll separate and take this as a separate tree and then we'll continue to develop this part here as another tree. Um, what I really want to do is bust out all my new wire that just arrived and start wiring crap. But this must come first. Now I'm probably going to wait to do, I have a willow I need to air layer outside off the big mama air layer willow. Um, I have a lilac I want to air layer this year. And then I still need to collect my eastern red cedar that I plan to take out of the ground this year. Those three things I'm probably not going to do till early this next week because we still have temps a couple nights here that are going to be hovering right around that 34, 35 degree mark. Yeah, it might be okay, but if we have a sudden shift later this week and it's not going to be 34, 35 and it's going to drop further, I don't want to have those air layers on there at that time yet. I also need to go in and get my systemic insect and disease prevention stuff on these trees that are now outside. I have noticed, this is the time of year those insects are waking up guys. They're hungry. First, let's get into this monster. So the tools that we're gonna need for a air layer project this year is, a little bark scraper is always good. Um, a grafting knife. This is from Bobcat Bonsai. I have my sphagnum moss that is soaking right now. I'm going to be using a air basket, not an air basket, a air layer cup on this one this year. I also have a wire. Because let me tell you, since I started adding a girdling wire onto my air layers, all of my air layers have been extremely successful. Um, some trees are easier to air layer than others, um, especially if you're air layering maybe something quite a bit bigger, quite a bit older. It really, or trees that have a tendency to want to callus and jump over your mark demarcation area, super, super successful. So even though this is a tree that's generally very easy to air layer, um, why let's just increase the chances let's just increase the chances so i've got my piece of wire i've got some zip ties to hold my circle for my jigger together i've got some cling wrap to hold in my humidity i've got some tin foil to put over that so that we don't get hot and scorched to kind of do a little light reflection and missing something oh i need my little my barky pliers let me grab those Got my barky squishers. I just remembered where the other train was going on the thought process. Wish, and I lost it again. <laughs> oh, the pliers made me think of it. Oh, I've already been really busy this morning. That's what I was going to say, working through my list. Um, the trees are back outside today after spending, I don't know, the last 10, 14 days, 7, 7 to 14, 10, somewhere in there inside um, due to our snowfalls and mainly the temp sitting, you know, that 20, 23 degree mark overnight. 
I've been so busy this morning already with a, and I have a massive to-do list to do. I'm already into my second application of sunscreen. So there's that. But let's get in and get this. Now, one of the things I do know I have to do, which I was hoping I wouldn't have to, is I need to take this branch right here off. And granted, it wasn't a branch that was going to be used in this design or this design and would have come off later when we separate it, maybe. But... It's going to be in the way unless we move our air layer up. And I don't want to. I want the layer to be right here. And then this is the tree's natural redonkulous weird growth pattern that it did on its own last year. So let's get in. The first thing I need to do is I want to mark. Where's my graft? Oh, there it is. Squirrel. I want to mark exactly where I want to layer this. So. I plan to air layer it right kind of below this bulge here. Can you see that? See that little bulge right there? And then we'll put it on here. So I need to get that branch off first. Now I need scissors. So smart Candace said, Candace, so squirrel Candace, why don't you just bring your whole little toolbox caddy over here if you're going to keep forgetting all these little things? All right, I want to take this branch off. I don't know if our temps are warm enough to do it as a cutting, but hey, why not? Let's just go with it. Squirrel. Squirrel came out of the tree. <laughs> that was that ruby leaping off. All right, so when we take a cutting like this, not planned for this episode, but I'm going to score and remove the bottom here, removing that green soft tissue. Okay, you know what I don't have is my rooting hormone because this wasn't planned. I'm gonna go get my rooting hormone. All right, so I really love, I love the Clonex gel for rooting gel hormone. And I'm going to, well, I was gonna need this for the air layer anyways. Whoa, it's purple, it's gooey. And it really creates like a nice kind of thick tacky base that kind of stays on that. And I'm just going to set this to the side for a second. And then I'm actually probably going to stick it in a pot that's still in the house. Because right now our temps out here just aren't super conducive. We also need the rooter, rooter hormone. All right, back to where we were. Let me check this stub cut. So I want to mark from here to probably here. So I'm just going to press in my grafting knife, get my coffee out of the way, try not to chop my fingers off. All right, so right here to about right here is where I think I'm going to do this. And so I'm going to just kind of press in with my knife. Then I'm going to go down to here. So what we're going to do is we're going to peel off this kind of cambial green tissue. And right underneath that then is the area that we need to peel down to. And it's a whiter color. There we go. Do you see the difference? We have a white center. We have the green here. I like my nails. Emily did them. And that's where we're going to go down to. It's easiest if we now squish our bark. Slips right off. And then a lot of times then you don't even need to use the gin plier, it sometimes just peels off absolutely perfectly. Now by making that first and second cut, what that also ensures is that we aren't going to peel this beyond what our cut points were. 
Wow, that's beautiful. Beautiful clean. Beautiful clean. Is that a thing, guys? Is that just not the nicest little clean earlier spot? That knife scares me a little because I'm pretty sure it's sharp. So that part's done. And the next thing we need to do is go in and add some, the rooting hormone right here. And then we're going to pack it with sphagnum, place our circle ball, circle ball. We're going to place the circle ball, guys. All right, so I have a paintbrush. And so we don't contaminate it. I am going to drip it off over here. Ooh, it's gooey. And we're going to paint it on. It's also my favorite color, purple. I love the color purple. Next, I'm going to add my girdling wire. Next, I'm going to take my cup thing, my jigger. sit like this and then we're going to zip tie it here it is cold out this can is cold out we are going to just pack both sides of this close it like that squish and I think we'll use the little ones. Zip. I don't think we're going to need any cling wrap because this is so tight and solid, but I do want to add the tin foil. To keep it from getting too hot. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Maybe you learned something. Um, yeah, share your projects. If you guys have any air layers going on, we will check back this, back this? We'll check back on this in a bit. But I'm excited to see what this tree does this year after this amazingness that it did last year. Do you want to, I'm gonna insert a picture right now to show you what this looked like. And if you remember from, we did the fall physiology live stream lecture um, in the fall, and we looked at this and this was massively cut back last fall because it was literally like 10 feet. It was, it was redonkulous. I hope you guys are having fun. Have fun with your bonsai. As always, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Um, shoot me an email if you want to share pictures um, with questions about your trees. CC. M is in mouse, S-O, the number 12 at yahoo.com. Also, if you have a burning question that you want me to jump into, you can, of course, email that also or drop it in the comments. And between our YouTube bonsai community, we should be able to assist, grow our trees together, level them up. Um, as always, love you. I love you all.